of gathering these last nine days, I should say now. But through this whole fall feast season and, you know, the, the things that we've discussed and the experiences that we've had, you know, they brought me to this place of just gratitude and thanksgiving to the Father for these experiences that we have. And so therefore, I felt inspired that, you know, it's a good reminder of what the scripture says about a heart of thanksgiving and living in gratitude to Yahuwah. So today we reflect on gratitude as a way of life that honors Yahuwah. True gratitude is acknowledging Yahuwah's baraka and expressing thanks to him daily. See, gratitude transforms us. It renews our perspective, and it draws us closer to our Creator. Let's explore what Scripture says about gratitude and thanksgiving and how we can cultivate it in our hearts. Because we've had some testimonies this morning about the struggles that we have with prayer. And I think that that comes and it links it right back to this again. So we need to recognize you who is Baraka in every situation. That means we need to be paying attention to what's going on in our lives. And we need to be able to attribute those things to who? The Father, where all things come from. Hallelujah. So give thanks in all circumstances, for this is Yahuwah's will for you and Yahushua HaMashiach, 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Shaul encourages us to give thanks in all situations, not only when life is easy, but even when we face challenges. You know, this reminds me of you, Brother Joseph, uh, and your and what you've experienced and what you've been sharing and the the experience that I had yesterday as you were sharing, I felt about, uh, you know, this came so true to me as well. Because this verse teaches us that our gratitude is not dependent on our circumstances, but on Yahuwah's unchanging character. So by recognizing that he is always at work, we can trust that even hardships serve a purpose in his divine plan. And we know that for those who love Yahuwah, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, Romans 8.28. And this helps us to reflect on challenging times in our life. So when you look back and you see Yahuwah's hand guiding you and teaching you and strengthening your amuna. Let's make it a habit to thank you, Hua, not just for the visible Baraka, but also for the lessons in the difficult moments, because they're there to train us and to raise us to another level of trust in Yahuwah. You know, we have many examples in scriptures of people in, enduring hardships, but what was on the other side was so much greater than their loss. And they grew from that experience and from those difficulties. So express gratitude through worship and praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, Psalms 100 verse 4. See, David reminds us to approach Yahuwah with a heart of thanksgiving and praise. Worship isn't just about songs or rituals. It's an overflow of a grateful heart. True worship is rooted in awe of who Yahuwah is and all he has done for us. So when we come before Yahuwah in worship, we express our appreciation for his faithfulness, his provisions, and his love. In the Tanakh, King David danced with joy as he brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. In 2 Samuel 6, verse 14, his thanksgiving was an expression of his love for Yahuwah. So cultivate a daily practice of praise, whether through prayer, singing, or meditation on Yahuwah's word. Let every worship moment reflect your gratitude. And as we see, prayer is included in that. And as you were saying, Brother uh, 
Brother Dean, about your experience with your friend and what you reminded him, it brings it right back to this again. And these things have a way of re restoration in our lives. They bring us to a place of recognizing who we need in these difficult times. Gratitude strengthens our amuna and our trust in Yahuwah. Says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to Yahuwah. Philippians 4, 6. Shaul reminds us that gratitude can be a powerful antidote to worry. When we approach Yahuwah with a thankful heart, it shifts our focus from our fears to his provision. It strengthens our amuna, helping us to trust him more deeply. Gratitude becomes a source of shalom as we remember Yahuwah's past faithfulness and trust him with our future. In John 6, Yahusha gave thanks before feeding the 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish. In this act, he demonstrated his trust in Yahuwah's power to provide, and he did this over and over again. He trusted Yahuwah for everything that was about to be done through his hands and through his, his efforts. He was empowered by the Father, and he empowers us too. So in moments of worry, take a moment to reflect on Yahuwah's past Baraka. Let his faithfulness inspire trust and gratitude as you present your needs to him. You know, he hears our prayers if we're walking in righteousness before him. He He's, he's paying attention to our lives. It's like he's not a, it's, it's like he's not aware. It's not like he's not aware of what's going on is what I'm trying to say. He, he knows what's happening in each one of our lives, what we're all experiencing, what we're all going through. He understands what it's going to take for us to get through this and what's waiting us on the other side. Hallelujah. So let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in the Shemayim. Sister Deanna, let your light shine, and see what happens. Yahuwah, he, he, he made a way to do something that's not normal, that's out of the realms of usually man's possibilities. He turned something that could take months into a week, just so you could have a testimony as you let your light shine before others. You said there's someone, you don't know who, this is how they're going to be able to see. So when we live with a thankful heart, we become a light to those around us. Gratitude isn't just a personal practice. It's a witness to you who is goodness. Others see our joy and our hope, and they're drawn to the source of that joy. So when people see us giving thanks in every season, they are reminded of you who is presence and his power. Shaul and Silas, despite being imprisoned, they sang hymns of praise. Their gratitude and suffering led to a miracle and ultimately inspired the jailer and his family to believe in Yahushua and Yahuwah. And this is found in Acts 16, 25 through 34. So let your gratitude shine in your relationships, your workplace, and your community. Let it be a testimony of Yahuwah's grace and his faithfulness. Gratitude to Yahuwah is essential, but not only for the sake of the good things that he bestows. Believers are called to be grateful and content, not just for what Yahuwah gives, but for who he is. Be encouraged by these passages. Philippians 4, 11 through 12. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. Shaul is grateful for the Philippians' support, but he wants them to know that even in difficult situations and circumstances, he has learned to be content. Are you content in your life? With no matter what's coming, that's not an easy thing to do. And that comes through our gratitude and our thankfulness to Yahuwah, no matter the situation. The secret of living amid life's difficulties is simple. Trusting Yahuwah in such a way that one can say, 
I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 and 18, it says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Yahuwah in Yahusha HaMashiach for you. Rejoice always. That's an interesting perspective, right? The joy in Shaul's letter is the basic mark of the believer. For the kingdom of Yahuwah is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and shalom and joy in the Ruach HaKodesh. Romans 14, 17. And it's also a fruit of the Ruach, Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and shalom, patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. It is often associated with the firm hope of the believer, according to Romans 5, verse 2 through 5 and 12, verse 12. So pray without ceasing. Suggest a mental attitude of prayerfulness. Continual personal fellowship with Yahuwah and a consciousness of being in his presence throughout each day. This is paying attention. This is being awake, actually seeking or searching, if you will, to, to be able to see his hands in your daily lives. Because believers are to be marked by thanksgiving. According to Ephesians 5, verse 4, as well as 20, and Colossians 2, verse 7, 3, verse 15, 17, and 4, verse 2. Interesting for us to think about and meditate on these things which we are hearing that are a core belief of a believer. And yet sometimes, as we have heard this morning in our in our time of, of, of worship and testimony that Sometimes it's not always easy to pray. And this isn't saying that, you know, you have to 24 hours a day that you're, that you're praying. This means that you're praying at moments of time. And we see in Scripture they did it in the morning, they did it at noon, and they did it at the evening. Throughout the whole day, they had moments where they took themselves into prayer, having a communication with the Father. And it's a powerful thing to experience when you press through, even though you don't feel like it sometimes. Sometimes you're in the midst of a whole lot of difficulties and struggles, and sometimes it's not easy to think, oh, I need to pray. I need to be thankful. I need to be grateful. But this is a, a, a sure reminder of the best way to come out of these these kind of feelings that we feel, these emotions that we experience. See Psalms 107, verses 1 through 3. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of Yahuwah say so. Let the redeemed of the Yahuwah say so. Yeah. Whom he has redeemed from trouble. And he's gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. He's gathered you. He's gathered me. Praise Yah. So I say, hallelujah to him. I'm thankful and I am very grateful for the things that he has brought me through, the things that he has allowed me to experience. So with this psalm, the members of the community call one another to give thanks for Yahuwah's enduring steadfast love, which he has shown not only to the people as a whole, but to the particular members as well. See, the distinctive feature of this psalm is its four accounts of people in distress. We find this in Psalms 107, verse 4, 10, 17, and 23. Whom Yahuwah rescued because the psalm concerns gratitude for Yahuwah, for Yehuda and Yehuda's return from exile. So being exiled, you can only imagine what kind of thankfulness there is, what kind of praise goes forth when you come from exile and now you're returning back. And a lot of us feel that way. Sometimes I've heard you say it, uh, Sister Essie, that you felt like you were, you, you were exiled. You were, you were away from him. And it was difficult to find a way back. 
it's difficult to be able to pray. But according to here, it's uh, the scriptures is, is showing us that, you know, these accounts, they give us a, a little bit more detail about why we should be gratitude and thankfulness for, for Yahuwah, you know, and, and the things, even the smallest little things we need to acknowledge. So it is likely that these four accounts describe the activities of members of the tribe of Yehuda in their exile. Cree, uh, a key reputation in the, in the Psalms include after initial uh, invitation to give thanks to Yahuwah, which we find in Psalms 107.1, the Psalms describe how each of the four groups cried to Yahuwah in their trouble, and he delivered them, which we see in uh, Psalms 107, verse 6, 13, 19, and 28. And it calls on them to thank Yahuwah in Psalms 107, 8, 15, 21, and 31. As much as we love the Psalms, these are some very important messages that we're being taught from them, and primarily it's, it, you know, it's about worshiping. It's about praising him. It's about praying to him. It's about exalting him and, and recognizing his hands in our life. The opening section, it states the purpose of the psalm, to call the congregation to give thanks to Yahuwah in Psalms 107.1. And the theme is his steadfast love endures forever. The specific occasion is that Yahuwah has redeemed his people i.e. he's rescued them from their trouble, and he's gathered them in from the lands, from their exile. Psalms 106, 47, and Deuteronomy 30, verse 3. Psalms 103, verses 2 through 5, it says, Barak Yahuwah, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who gives all your iniquity, who heals all your disease, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See, this is a hymn of praise, celebrating the abundant goodness and the love of Yahuwah for his people. It is the first of four Psalms reflecting on Yahuwah's dealing with his people from creation to exile. Psalms 103, it introduces the sequence of, by recalling that Yisrael, survival in the time of Musha, uh, is, was due to Yahuwah's steadfast love. It begins with each individual singer exhorting his or her own soul to Barak Yahuwah, and then goes on to list the benefits that the soul should be careful not to forget. The crowning benefit is Yahuwah's enduring love to the descendants of the faithful and i believe each one of us are part of that lamentations 3 22 through 24 the steadfast love of yahuwah never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning great is your faithfulness yahuwah is my portion says my soul therefore i will hope in him every new morning He, his, his mercy, his graciousness, his love, it's all new every morning. Each day represents another opportunity to experience Yahuwah's grace, his faithfulness. See, Yahuwah's covenantal fidelity and his personal integrity remain intact no matter what happens. He's always there. And it's new every morning. So we get to start over fresh. Sometimes we got to pick up where we left off. But you know what? That should give us strength as we waken to a new day with new thoughts of praise on our hearts and our lips. And even though we're concerned about some matters, giving thanks that he is with us is a source of strength for us. 95 two, Psalms 95 two says, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs and praise. He loves to hear the praise from the hearts of the people to him, acknowledging him, being grateful to who he is in our lives. Colossians 3, 16 and 17 says, let the word of Mashiach dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, 
singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to Yahuwah. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Master Yahusha, giving thanks to Yahuwah the Father through him. These are patterns that we need to follow. These are directions that we need to take heart. Ephesians 5, 18, 20, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Ruach, addressing one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing and making melody to Yahuwah with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to Yahuwah the Father in the name of our master, Yahusha HaMashiach. Being filled with the Ruach results in joyful praise through singing and making melodies. And this is one of the things that's in the beginning of this particular scripture that I love about this assembly. As we come together and we're gathered, addressing one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual song and singing and making melody to Yahuwah with your heart. It's a matter of the heart. And, and this is a very moving experience as we continue to do these things and as we come together with intent to do them, purposefully giving thanks and gratitude to the Father. It's why it's so special that we gather together. James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James make the observation that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from Yahuwah. Matthew 7, 11, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to the, your children, how much more will the Father, who is in the Shemayim, give good things to those who ask him? He knows how to give good gifts. He knows the desires of our heart. That's why it's a perfect thing that he does for us when he interacts with us and when he delivers on those things which we are praying for. So as in James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask Yahuwah, who gives generously to all without reproach. It will be given to him. James reminds the readers of Yahuwah's goodness in their trials. Yahuwah is not tempting them to sin, but the difficulties in life are intended to strengthen and to perfect them and to make them more like Yahuwah, as well as make them more like Yahusha, who endured many difficulties and struggles. See, Yahuwah's intentions for them are always for good, Romans 8, 28. There is nothing in this world that is truly good that has any other origin than from above, namely the Shemayim, descending from the Father of lights, which refers to Yahuwah as the creator of the heavenly lights, Psalm 74, verse 16, and 136, verse 7 through 9. So a prime example of his good gifts are that he give us the, the, the lights in the night sky, the moon and the stars. And they are a gift because they allow us to stay on track with him, in perfect harmony with him, on time for his feast days. Praise Yah that he, that he gives us the things that we need, even though we don't realize we need them sometimes. See, Yahuwah is unchanging in his character, and therefore in his giving of good, unlike the variations of the night changing today or the shifting shadows caused by the sun or the moon. He is constant. He is unchanging in his character. Hallelujah. Praise God that he, he is unchanging. Therefore, we can trust him. We know what to expect. As we read the scriptures, we get a better understanding of who he is, and therefore our expectations begin to shift a little bit come into alignment with, with, with who he truly is. See, Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. 1 Peter 1, verses 6 to 7, in this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that... The genuineness of your amuna, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, 
glory and honor at the revelation of Yahushua HaMashiach. We're going to go through experiences. We're going to go through trials and difficulties. But as it says here, it's, it's to show the genuineness of your Amuna. Do you really trust him? How strong is your faith? Colossians 4.2, persevere in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Psalms 106.1, give thanks to you who is good, whose mercy endures forever. Colossians 3.17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, the Master, giving thanks to Yahuwah the Father. Simple reminders in everything, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything, remembering that we're doing everything to honor the Father, and we're doing it in representation of Yahushua, who is our example. And that leads us to giving thanks to the Father through him. Hallelujah. Psalms 95, 1 through 3 says, O come, let us sing to Yahuwah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For Yahuwah is a great Elohim and a great king above all Elohim. And we're going to conclude with Hebrews 2.28 where it says, therefore, we who are receiving the unshakable kingdom should have gratitude with which we should offer worship, pleasing to Yahuwah in reverence and in awe. Hallelujah. It's amazing how all of these come together and they, they really do encapsulate our discussions earlier, uh, the testimonies and, and the witness that we have. So praise Yah. You know, the more he takes us into, into the things of this life and he allows us to experience the, 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 the good things, the difficulties, the trials, we know they all have a purpose for us. They all work together for the good of those that are called for his purpose. These are the things that strengthen us. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that empower us. And praise Yah that he's in control of it all. And praise Yah that he has our attention. So with that being said, I'd really love to have a discussion about these matters, but also about your experiences that you've had during these during these fall feasts, I should say, but mainly the last eight, nine days that we've had together. Hallelujah. Uh, Dean and Carmen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Elderick. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Um, so again, hallelujah, Abi Yahuwah, for... Uh, your patience with with me and with my household that you would uh, allot this time that you would extend and redeem time you know and and allow allow my work to be quickened to to understand things that i i never knew it, it's it's one thing to to be aware of something but not understand it but it's it's even more when he gives you something you never knew and then he quickens you in the understanding right at that time which causes the things that you thought you knew to fall into line and either be debunked or or solidified as truth so hallelujah um there was uh, just two things i wanted to share um thank you also for your your you know your laboring for yahuwah um, in sharing this message, Elder Rick. Um, you, when people uh, look at, you know, what happened after uh, Hasatan, you know, entering into the Garden of Eden and, and Adam, and, and, and they say things like, you know, to imply that Yahuwah was like caught off guard, you know, and, and, um, and then they they fall into this thing when it comes to hearing the, the word hearing Torah, that there always this this thing that makes them think about their own life, like why they're struggling to give their all to Yahuwah, um, is because they think when you look at what happened in the garden, it was as if he was caught off guard. And I love today when we read in the scriptures, yeah, when we read in His Word that He is unchanging, yeah. 
his character, his unchanging, um, which means that he needs not adapt to anybody or anything. Hallelujah. Um, and then it also makes me think about um, when, um, you know, yeah, it, it just makes me to know that his ways are, you know, are, are unchanging. So there is no, oh, this is what it was. Hallelujah, Abiyahua. Yahuwah. When, when I hear the term uh, New Testament, yeah, now I know that to be inaccurate because new would imply to me uh, that the old one was faulty, was at fault. So there had to be a new. And that's why hallelujah for renewed, renewed understanding that man needed, not that Yahuwah needed to change anything in himself, you know, so hallelujah. And in reference to these last eight days, um, hallelujah, I, I, I've you know, my, my family have seen Yahuwah as our healer. Um, again, this is our third uh, time observing the, the, the feast times. He set apart feast times. And each time uh, our family has grown closer. So not only do we get the opportunity to grow closer to the scriptures uh, and to Yahuwah and Yahusha, but our family grow closer. Our family uh, are more interested not only to know, but to live out in, in patience with one another, in, in loving, in being caring, um, inquiring what we know and what we think we know and, and looking for areas of, you know, where there are holes um, in, in, in our armor, you know, in, in Yahuwah's armor upon us. So, yeah, we, we, we've had a beautiful time. Um, and again, you know, we know Yahuwah to be our faithful provider because uh, so many people don't know when they, when they see, look with their naked eye, but we are experiencing a very challenging time, but there is no, there is no focus at all. There is, there is not, the challenge does not exist. The challenge has not existed. The times that we are living in that would be forced on us and programmed, whether it be by society or whether it be by the whisperer, have not been the focal point. And hallelujah, as a result, we are renewed. We are, you know, uh, strengthened. And yeah, hallelujah, Abba Yahuwah. Great job, brother. Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. What a blessing. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not only affecting you as the head of the home, but your whole family is coming to this. And praise God, we get to witness it. You know, we experience how in the beginning it was you singing the worship, and then your family began to be involved. And praise Yah. Praise Yah. Let me see to fix this before the static continues. Yeah? That better? All right. Don't let no static get in the way. Praise Yah. But we appreciate, you know, that testimony. And we can actually see it with our own eyes, the the changes this, that have taken place in, in the family. And right now we're talking about your family, you know, where he's brought you guys from and the experiences that you all have had with him and praise Yah, you know, that's another benefit that we have in assembly. We get to witness the transformation that takes place in, in, in families and in individual lives. So, you know, a lot to be thankful and grateful for. That's for sure. You know, because um, even though, you know, your family is your family, but you're part of my family. So I, you know, you know, it, it, it really does excite me to see, you know, what he's doing and what he has already done and, you know, what he continues to do in your lives. So, and your, your, your children are precious, you know, they, they engage, they're, 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 they're part of the assembly. They're part of the family. They fit right on, you know, they take leadership positions just like you, you know, so, you know, you guys are raising your children right and praise God that at this young age, they are beginning to receive all of this. Therefore, they take it with them as they continue to grow and, and they get to share with others as well. And praise God, they find their position within the assembly, you know, Yahuwah's kingdom, you know, 
you know, doing their role that they've been called to as well. And Yahuwah is never caught off guard. He, he, he knows all, you know, he, 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 so he knows the beginning from the end. And, you know, he is prepared for that. So, you know, he knows what your, your decision is going to be. That's why you're here today. You know, he knew that he would speak, that he would draw you, and that you would come, you know. But he gives that opportunity to everyone. But he also knows that those that aren't going to, you know, be turning to him with their lives and surrendering all. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Brother Al, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, just like um, Brother Dean was saying, um, bless you all for understanding. Um, although there's no, um, I mean, you still feel like you didn't do things correctly. But there's understanding, you know, there's, you, you're doing things purposefully, you know, coming from um, the um, Feast of Atonement. And there was this, like, you know, cutting of your tearing of the heart, you know, where you're, you're checking, you're checking yourself and really examining yourself. And you're not flippant about sin or you're not you're you're very cautious about the things that you do you know checking yourself that there's nothing that is small or nothing that is negligible you know it's positioning yourself in that place where you know you're 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 an ambassador of the one who has called you because you know in this walk it's not just about what you say <clears throat> is how your life reflects because there are people you will never speak to but they they watch you and the things that you do the compromises that you make affects their own work you know it becomes a hindrance to them when you become you compromise in those things that are small you know if you think about the three hebrew boys <clears throat> if you put it in the context of today Somebody might say it's not a big deal. I mean, you don't mean it in your heart. Just bow down and you don't really, you're not really worshiping him in your heart. But the 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 fact was that it was going against the commandment of the most high. And they had the understanding who the most high was. And you know, sometimes it's because we lack that understanding that we compromise. Because the more you understand, the more you trust, the more you obey. You know, and that is the point where, you know, we're being led to, you know, that point where we're being broken down to know who it is that we have come to meet. Where our challenges or the things that we face on a day to day, we don't, we don't put them side by side with the most high, you know, because that's where compromise comes in, where we start putting our challenges or the things that we see physically and we start comparing it to, um, our Father who is in heaven. And once we start building in obedience, when we start, when we start building that understanding, then the easier or the more grace we're given to obey and to overcome certain things that are brought to test us, not to destroy us, not to bring us down, but to test us, to strengthen us. And this, this has been like a real eye opener and you know it's 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 like it's my first time you know going through this and I know like I might I might have fumbled a bit in some of the things but it's progress and I, I praise you for that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise you. Acknowledging recognizing you know being aware of what's happening around you. You know those things are all important because sometimes we get complacent in our lives so Great job, brother. Sister Naomi. Shabbat Shalom, sister. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka and Elder Rick. Um, my heart is full because there's so much. Um, and I I ask the Father to give me strength as I worship him and thank him. My heart is overwhelmed with gratefulness. Um, this was my first um, gathering in person. And from the time I met Brittany at the airport till the time that I said my goodbyes, 
this has been such an experience, such an overwhelming experience. And Yahuwah was nothing but love for me. Um, I recognize his power and his grace because uh, me, myself, if I'm asking myself truthfully, why me? I don't know, but Yahuwah knows all. He is so mighty and so loving and so giving. And he chose me. He chose me to know the truth, to come out of darkness, to be immersed, to be gathered with such wonderful people. Um, and most importantly, like-minded people. I praise Abba Yah for giving me this opportunity to worship and glorify his name and to show my gratefulness to him and to you all. Praise Abba. Hallelujah. We love you, sister. It was a great pleasure and honor to be there during your immersion. And he chose you because you're his. He loves you. Praise God that you chose him back. Hallelujah. Mr. Avia. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Pasha. Um, yes, I am so grateful uh, to the Most High Yah, um, how he's brought me out of uh, the world and Christianity and brought me into, you know, the truth of his word and how I'm finding out that there's the discipline that I need, you know, to, um, that he's given me the discipline to go on and be encouraged and um, what to look for in his walk and how to come closer to him. And I am so grateful for that knowledge that he's given me uh, through this walk, through the atonement and also um, going forward to, um, the Feast of Shukot. And I thank him and I praise him for what he's done in my life and what he's doing and what he's going to do for me and my family and for all of us here. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. 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 Continue to praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yah. Ray and Ashley. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, well, you know, I have to say that uh, to start, this was our first uh, feast experience um, and just kind of following Torah in that way. That's kind of been a blessing in itself. So really all praise to the most high on that because it truly has brought us together closer as a family. Um, and even even more so, I kind of got to say thanks uh, to Sister Deanna for being the servant that she is because our daughter was seeing her professionally. Um, and she just kind of kept pointing the way this way, uh, to which, you know, again, that's how we kind of came into the assembly. That's how we came into following Torah, which has just truly opened the door to just so many greater things. Um, so again, praise Abba because wow, just the 180 things have made, you know, it's, it's been awesome. Praise Yah. I didn't know Sister Deanna had that influence on why you're here. That's awesome testimony. Good work, Sister Deanna. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Be in yours. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. brother. Well, Brother Ray, Hallelujah. I am honored that I had the opportunity to meet your brother and your family and uh, begin to build a relationship with you. And I'm grateful for that. And I uh, look forward to what he continues to do in us as we continue to honor him and to follow his ways. Likewise, being able to meet you guys and, you know, have something tangible and being able to glean from everybody else has, has been awesome. Um, and again, it's just all praise to the most high. It's It's been a glorious experience. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Ben and Jamie. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I was going to go on camera and blow the show far, so I just wanted to invite anybody 
the clap or blow their show far. And then um, I think Sister Jamie had something to share after that. So, uh, you know, I love the show far and I love doing that with you all. So if you want to grab it real quick, I'll give you like 10, 15 seconds. And then I'll just say real quick. Um, yeah, it's always an amazing experience. But this one in particular was just special because I got to get close to to Brother Rick. I don't know if everybody knows, but, um, you know, I needed a place to stay. And like he just didn't even hesitate to let me stay with him, and and we had some good laughs, and you know he uh, he mentioned some of my behaviors that uh, you know a lot of would put a lot of people off, but he just has such a loving heart, and uh, you know just to meet Ray and and Rudy and you know and all the guys again, and it really just jazzed me up and got me um you know it it does something to you, and, and meeting Naomi and meeting. You know, eating that cheesecake of <laughs> Britney's, you know, just just all the little things that I look forward to. Um, you know, that was one thing I looked at Britney. I said, you brought it, right? She says, yeah, I brought it. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I'm going to blow the show far and then Jamie wanted to share real quick. So, hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, whenever you guys want to blow, go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I remember when we didn't have people that could blow the shofar for real, so we had to use videos, and now we got experts. Mm. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, appreciate that. Um, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, one thing that really stood out for Sukkot for me, unfortunately, I couldn't make it, and I missed all of you very much. Um, but so one night we're in a tent. And a thunder and lightning storm rolls in. And of course, my flesh immediately goes, well, you could just go inside, right? But it was so funny because I had that thought of like, well, Yasharel didn't get to go inside. And the father protected us through it. I mean, it was almost this electrifying feeling of like, he was there with us the whole time. It was the best moment we had. For sure. Like those two hours, it was the best. Yeah. And we're just sitting there. It's dark, so it was probably time to go to sleep. But we're just sitting there and we can see the lightning through the tent walls. And we're just like, this is the yaw that we serve. I mean, goodness sake. It, it was the coolest thing. <clears throat> and I, I just... the way that he grows our, our trust and faith in him slowly over time is just amazing. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Abba. This is Ravi Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This has been a really beautiful Sukkot. I'm just very grateful to Yahuwah for how he works things out and and answers prayers in his own perfect timing. This assembly has been praying for my different grandchildren, me, my whole family. This assembly is so good about praying for my family. And uh, not too long ago, I shared with the assembly that my oldest granddaughter has been going through a difficult time. We started off keeping Sabbath with us and celebrating or observing our feast days. And her father was concerned that this was something strange, odd, uh, cult. He also felt the same way about the Jehovah's Witness religion and even the Catholic religion that he was born in. He uh, felt, you know, not motivated to uh, practice that religion. So there was just this void in my granddaughter's life that she had no faith, no way of getting to know her creator and she couldn't get no encouragement or fellowship because her father wouldn't allow it. So I just prayed to the father to make a way for my granddaughter. 
And we had longed to come to Florida. I saw the accommodations and everything and being with the assembly and go, oh, I want to go so badly. But, you know, things just didn't come together. We kind of, because of the wildfires and stuff, we started thinking about, well, maybe we need to just save money towards a vehicle and just do the local Sukkot where we live in our area. And so we went ahead with the local Sukkot and I honestly didn't want to be up in the mountains in a tent. I mean, the sister says I could stay in a house, but I wanted to support Derek and my girls. So I was thinking, oh, we heard you know nobody. So my daughter felt you really don't know anybody but a couple of couples, and a few couples, and they're all married couples. And my daughter's divorced, I'm divorced. I go, how are we gonna fit in? But you know what? Yeah, you know, who I was making everything come together. My daughter and grandchildren were treated very well. It didn't feel odd or out of place. Everything was beautiful. The weather was beautiful. I made it in the tent. Well, the first night I was in the house, the next three nights I was in the tent. And then when I came back down, um, I was talking to my oldest daughter, asking about Shayla. And Sabah just says, just for the fun of it, it was like almost a joke. I says, remember how much Shayla likes saying the word tabernacle? I go, uh, could she go to the Feast of Tabernacles? That's a few days left. I heard in the background her saying, uh, yeah, and I go, what did she say? Yeah, I go, well, call me back. And then my daughter called me back and says, yeah, Shayla wants to go. Now she's going to be 17 in a few months. So she has more like say about what she wants to do. And so Derek spoke to her dad. He says, yeah, she could go. And my granddaughter is now keeping the feast of Sukkot for three days. And they, she's been treated very well up there. And that's what she's been longing is for some spiritual food, some love. And I believe that that's going to help her get over her severe social anxiety and her suicidal, you know, idolation. It's being up there, getting to know that Yahuwah loves her and that his people love her. So if she's had as a boy in her life for over four years since we started this journey. So I just want to thank all of you. I want to thank most of all Yahuwah for answering prayers and making it happen on Sukkot for my granddaughter, Shayla. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Kim. Kim Free. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I wanted to say, I just wanted to thank the Father for all my life, even before I really knew him. I, I truly knew him, him always being there, always answering my prayers, everything, time I fell back from him, and he would just always still be there and still rescue me. And I also want to praise him for this Sukkot. Usually for all of the feast days, I'm my happiest me. I'm my most joyful. But this feast, this Sukkot, I was not feeling that happiness and joy that I always feel. And it was a real struggle for me this time. And I'm so thankful that right at the end, right before the last great day that he gave me, you know, that breakthrough, not only with the happiness and joy from the feast, but I also feel like I had breakthrough with this battle with prayer that I've been having on and off for some years. And I just really feel like I finally won this battle and that I just want to praise the father. I want to thank his son for you know, giving that salvation and being that sh intercessor and the strength. And just, I'm just so thankful for everything. I'm thankful for this assembly, for all of the spiritual food and strength that they have given me in this walk. And I feel like I've grown so much in this past year. I've been with the assembly and I've been in the truth for some years now, but the, the growth that I've had just in the year that I've been here. I'm just so thankful for all of the elders and all of the community here. I want to just 
Praise Abba. Uh, hallelujah. 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 We love you, sister. Praise you. Yeah. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you for the breakthrough. Sister Marguerite, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Rick, Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, yeah, Sukkot was a blessing as always. And I I, um, I echo the same thing, sister, that you just were sharing because um, the feasts have always been very mixed for me. And, and it's because within my family, I'm... I feel very alone, you know, I'm, and so <clears throat> what's been hard for me is to go and see so many families together and, and I'm there. I'm not alone. Of course, I'm with my beautiful blessing of spiritual families, both online here with you all. And <clears throat> Ab has been so generous in blessing me with local mishpaka as well but I always had this like longing in my heart and, um, and it was hard. Like I'd get really sad. I mean, that's been my greatest prayers for someone, one person, but you know, all, but at least one just to like be able to fellowship with. And what Ava showed me this time was so powerful. He showed me a couple things actually, or some things that really came to me strongly was that, um, I'm trying to rely so I have been trying to rely so much on myself and it's a process I still do, but to try to like get my family to like know him and, and also um, on that same kind of understanding, like trying to earn my salvation as well, like trying to do everything right before I can come to him and always looking at like, Oh, I'm doing this wrong or I'm doing that. And for him, he just really showed me this time his grace and his love that it's he's doing everything. I'm doing nothing. I can't do it. There's it's there's no way it'll happen if I'm doing it. It's it's him. And just to really trust him and ha have real faith in him that he has done it. He will do it and he's doing it and that. And that also that he is with me, that I'm not alone. And, and I, when I look back, I, you know, I see like how long I've been with you all. This is my, this was my fourth Sukkot. And, um, and, you know, it's just kind of been an up and down where I'm feeling so connected and blessed by my Mishpaka and by his spirit, by his presence, but then this like longing for my family. And so I feel like he's kind of really gotten me through that a bit that I just need to relax and really rest in him and really trust him and that he will call them at a time when they are going to be most receptive. And all I can do is just really just keep seeking him in my own walk, in my own life and growing in that way. And um, so I just really am thankful for that. I praise him for that. I, I praise him so much for my spiritual families and brothers and sisters. And it's so powerful to hear the testimonies of everyone to really see like, it just, it's like such a um, encouragement and edification of how real he is. Like I, I, can trust him and not try to control and do everything myself. And then the other thing that he shared with me or really put strongly in my understanding and heart was also to really love everyone. Like my brothers and sisters that are in a walk that's not understanding fully and um, also those that are, don't even know him to really love them because throughout scripture from the very beginning, every time Israel left, he was always there for them. His whole plan is for everyone that has, uh, has strayed for him, from him or ha does not know him, you know, like while we are sinners, while we were his enemy, he was there for us. He's there for everyone. And that's what our great commission is, is to be a light to the nations. That is like the whole point and purpose of 
Yahusha coming and his plan, everything he does is just to gather us to him. And so to really, um, and it's amazing because every time I have, well, not every time, but so often like at my workplace or if I'm out with a sister here, like we always pray um, before we leave each other. And then even at one of our Sukkot fires, someone comes up and they're like, Oh, what are you doing? You know? And, um, or someone will come up when we're praying and um, be like, Oh, are you praying? And, and then we pray with them. And so it's really um, before, rather than being in like, um, like fear or worry, even of my sisters who are Christians, but not, you know, on walking in his way, just to really extend his love to them, like quit trying to be like, oh, well, you know, I, you know, just, just do what I do, but just pray with them and encourage them on their walk. And just to, it, he gave me a, a better sense of what it really means to be a light and to be love and to just really be there for everyone and pray for everyone. And, um, and that's been helpful with my family as well. So I just, yeah. I think, I thank Abba for what he just pours out and reveals and shows every feast. It's such a blessing to be able to partake in them and to just really open my heart and mind to whatever he has for me this year or this time. And, I just praise him. He's amazing. So hallelujah. Yeah. And yeah, bless you all. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Continue to be that light. All righty. Well, our time is up, unfortunately. Uh, we still have a lot of hands. I'd love to get to you, but we got to get into our announcements. So. Praise you for this time together, our discussion, and may he continue to brock you on your Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. <laughs>